Adel, karibu. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, uh -huh. So your Legally Clueless podcast is, is big right now. But uh, when you started the podcast, what, the first episode you did was, after the intro, that is, yeah. you did uh, something about grief. Yeah, and you're speaking about grief from your own uh, experience, your, your own story. Uh, how is it important for us as young people, uh, especially the youth who you target with this podcast, to really feel the pain? Um, I wouldn't um, put it in those words, like feel okay. the pain. I just mm -hmm. think it's important for whoever you are, whatever um, journey you're on, mm -hmm. to just own it. So mine could be grief, it could be okay. different things for different people, right? Um, I think it's important to just show that you're human and you're mm -hmm. vulnerable and you're going through um, different ups and downs. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And, it's, and not only for the youth, I think any human Anybody. being just needs to not necessarily feel the pain, but just like feel whatever feel that pain. emotion and is. On the story. Yes. Yeah. You, you say it's, there's nothing wrong with feeling the way you are feeling. Yeah, exactly. Is, is that the reason why we call this legally clueless? So you have all the rights <laughs> to really feel, you know. That, 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 that is it. And also when I was starting the podcast, I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. And I thought it was okay. At least um, my support system was you know reinforcing that it's okay that mm. you don't know and you just put one foot in front of the other until mm. things take shape mm -hmm. and i think sometimes we force ourselves to i still do it as well to to know everything but that's not really the case okay. um a huge part of being human is not knowing what you're um doing. yeah i don't think many of us know what we're doing right mm. and so legally is that it's okay it's allowed it's allowed to not know to be clueless okay. yeah uh, the the latest episode you did, you know, was a very inspiring story. You yeah. know, what really did you learn about that episode? Um, that would be one twenty six. The uh, yeah. um, watermelons the watermelon, photography. Yeah, yeah. So that is a wonderful girl called Nema, mm -hmm. and we recorded it as part of this tour we're on. Okay. So we are going to four counties in Kenya. That's Nairobi. Yeah. Well, obviously, right now we are in Nakuru Nakuru, County. Yeah. Um, Kisumu and Mombasa okay and so that story was recorded while we were in Nairobi mm -hmm. as part of the tour mm -hmm. and I think it's not sometimes we put pressure on stories to like teach us something okay, and okay. we need to learn something yeah. and you go there with a notebook and stuff and sometimes it's just to listen and you can see yourself in it okay. you can connect with the story um, you can learn something about somebody um, and you just kind of like understand how bound together our humanity is the way we have shared stories we do have mm. shared stories and mm. and um i think it's a desmond tutu quote which is like okay. uh, my humanity is bound up in yours yeah. because we can only be human tomorrow and i think that's what stories do mm. they show how bound we okay. are yeah okay. uh you are going around you are you are on your tour right now mm -hmm. trying to find different stories you know uh you've always uh, stood by the african culture and you 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 always said that only by being african then we can understand what we are going through and now we should be able to fix ourselves on this tour so far so good you've really you know you've really had the chance to listen to different people specifically mm -hmm. the youth mm -hmm. would you really say that we are opening up uh, the way we should open up or we still afraid to 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 tell our stories to share our stories and and scared to reveal some part of us as young people i think people are a product of their environment okay. and we cannot um detach as young people i am still counting myself as a young yeah, person yeah, yeah. as young people we yeah. can't detach our generation from like previous generations of different degrees of like oppression okay. pain Mm. colonialism and stuff like that things that really altered our identity mm. and who we are as a people mm. if you think africa if you think east africa if you think kenya mm. if you think break it down into different communities and mm. stuff like mm. that um and so if we are not able to open up it that is a product of like the environment we're growing yeah, up in growing isn't up, it yeah. um so you kind of have to take people at their pace okay. you know we can't all open up at the same, at the same time, time about whatever our journey exactly mm. it's just but the more you listen to 
other African stories and other Kenyan stories, okay. the more you realize that there's nothing wrong with you mm. and that your voice, your story, whatever you've gone through, good or bad, mm. um, is valid and, and, and deserves to be heard, okay. you know? Um, okay. I think that really is the case because there's no gauge to say as we go on the tour, like, oh, today 10 people yeah, opened up one, within yeah. five minutes, you know? Okay. It's, it's very personal but I think let's not forget the generations of things we've gone through as a people okay. that have made us who we are today it's all very connected mm -hmm. even if we were not there back then it is, it's, it's, it's all connected as to who we are now yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly 10 years uh, on mainstream radio at 1FM then you moved to Kiss and yeah I, I used to listen to you in the morning and <laughs> I also listen to Ab Urban Africa. Oh, and dope. The way you were playing African music, the yeah. way you're pushing the African culture and content, yeah. you know, is kind of still related to what you're doing right now. Yeah. On mainstream radio, you have maybe th three hours every morning to do the show and on Saturday to do the Urban Africa show. Did you feel like that, that was not really enough time for you to really push the African narrative and the Africanism that people yeah. should actually embrace? I, I really don't want people to think like I wake up in the morning and think, how can mm -hmm. I uh, push this? Uh, you know, this push agenda. remind Africans mm -hmm. of who they are. I think just by you being how you are, you are already African. There's no one way to be African. Yeah, and I think yeah, yeah. that's, you know, one of the things the podcast is doing. And so, like, you know, one of them was purely African music. Yeah. Most of the music, well, some of the music we played I liked some of them I, I didn't yeah, as you do any yeah, yeah. you know with all songs mm. but like it was a reflection of me like I would listen to, listen to much that much type much. of music mm. at home or in my car um, same as with Kiss Urban Africa was literally my Africa. playlist yeah of what I was listening to, like, even after the show, I would continue that on my way home. Music. Yeah, it was okay. that. So yeah. it wasn't like I was pushing a, a certain agenda, I think. First, I just knew it's like dope music. Yeah. It deserves airplay. Mm. It, like, I would love to, you and your friends, like, to yeah, sit down yeah, and yeah, vibe yeah, to yeah, music, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I wanted to be able to do that with listeners. And so, for me, that's what it was. And for this, yes, there is an element of showing the diversity of Africans Africa, yeah. in terms of the podcast mm. so that people can know that there's more than one way to be African. Mm. I mean, people think of Africa and they think of either corruption or mm. a baby with a fly or okay. roaming on their face and stuff. They don't really. And this is the same when I say people, I mean, even other Africans, because even, even Africans. like we in Nairobi, do we really understand what Nakuru is about mm. or do we understand what Kisum is about mm. and stuff like that? So the podcast and the tour and the episodes we're doing is to really help us, even as Africans, connect with each other, learn okay. more about each other and like start to be okay with whatever African looks like for each person. For each person. You know, because it's, it, it's not a one size fits okay. all, you know. There are different yeah. sides to the story, but yeah. it's still all connected. Yes, yeah. The tour is amazing, and I, I think I think it's it's a very nice thing. Uh, I, I was on your website, and the way the way you travel the world with the with the with the podcast, the legally clueless podcast, some other African continent, uh, countries as well. Yeah. Uh, would you say that you you still find the same story, let's say in Botswana, mm -hmm. the the same story that maybe you found someone who, who spoke about that specific topic here in Kenya, then another person who also mm. speaks about it in another country. I think there are many similarities. Mm. I, I think we just don't explore them okay. much, or maybe we're not exposed to them much, I don't know. Mm. But I think um, I was once in Accra and the stories recorded there were mm. very similar to certain stories that were recorded okay. here. Um, and I think the issue is that because we've not heard these stories before from other countries, we think, oh, somebody in Ghana is like That's so different from someone in Kenya or somebody in Senegal is so, yes, of course, there are differences, but we're humans. And, and, and even just by virtue of being Africans, we've probably gone through something similar, maybe not the same, okay. right? If we mm -hmm. think about historical things, these points of connection, mm -hmm. our cultures are not the same, but like these things we understand, you know? Um, and so I feel like 
that, that kind of pops up sometimes mm -hmm. like if when i'm recording when i'm recording stories um and most of the times if i'm what has happened is so in accra i recorded a story by a south african yeah okay you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was a story that like people in kenya completely like were related, related with mm -hmm. um in same thing in ethiopia mm -hmm. like i recorded a kenyan and the and the south african mm -hmm. as well okay and so it's it's just you know we didn't have these borders mm -hmm. these borders were given to us like and, a bunch uh, of uh, some of them are mental as well uh, no i mean just even as a continent mm -hmm historic these borders were not ours like mm. hey this is where kenya begins and ends and all of these things mm. right so we are very united yes we are very different but we're all very united and i think what i've seen when i travel to record stories is just how similar we are how how, how we have shared stories yeah and we could actually pull together and create a common destiny i think so i think so i think that's possible uh, before we just wind up of course um right now uh, you're not really focusing on the, you know, the mainstream media as much. You, you, you're taking the podcast on digital uh, distribution and stores and people actually stream it on, uh, you know, Google Podcast and all that. This generation right now, maybe, maybe we could say that m most of these stories are, are still with the young people who maybe are in the villages who maybe don't know what Deezer is, maybe don't yeah. know what Google Podcasts are or uh, stuff like that. Are you also planning to maybe, you know, diversify a little bit and create forums where you just, you know, we're not, we, we're, just, we're just speaking with young people physically, not telling them, uh, t telling them to go on stream yeah. this day and this day. I think we've got to start somewhere thinking about how to improve our internet penetration as Definitely, well. Definitely, yeah. Because that will be faster mm. than me going to each community. Definitely. I'm not saying I don't want to do that, but I'm also saying that as a people, we have to start thinking, okay, how do we make sure people are connected, people have internet. digital skills? Mm. What does that look like in terms of infrastructure? What does that look like in terms of whenever there's a s corruption scandal? Mm. How has it cost us in terms of making sure young people mm. are connected to the internet? Okay. How will it cost us if you look at, because I think this is a youth platform, mm. Africa is going through a youth bulge, right? Definitely. Highest population of youth mm. uh, from all continents, you know what I mean? Mm. So what does that mean in terms of like our voices together? What does that mean if young Africans are not connected to the internet? Especially along the sub-Saharan continent. What, what does that mean? What does that mean when it comes to getting a job? What does that mean when it comes to being, even just knowing what's happening on another continent? Yeah. Because the internet allows us to do that. Mm. And I think for me, when we start saying, okay, we need to remodel, okay, the world is going that side, let's remodel to like, it's like, no, let's like, how do we connect how these, connect these people? Um, I think that's very important. And also the podcast does play on, on Trace Radio, which is yeah, super yeah, exciting yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. Because it means also you young people in universities don't have to think about recording a demo. Yeah, Your story, you yeah. told me about the demo. Mm -hmm. Recording a demo, going to, you said you went to Milele FM yeah. and there were thousands of other people coming for that same audition <laughs> with you, right? Yeah. You don't have to think about that. You can actually, right now, have your podcast, have it up, get it, um, you know, oh, no. grow it mm. to a point that these traditional platforms are like hey what is this we're seeing coming up of nakuru nini and well, how c how can we have it on our platform yeah because it makes business sense it's business yeah you get on their platform but you're not an employee so, so you don't an, need a demo yeah exactly because yeah. how many those are thousand people you went to audition, for the audition uh, yeah. you think they all didn't they all had demos they did right yeah and there were some established people there right Def definitely so i think we need to start shifting how we think because the world has shifted. The world is shifting. Right? Mm. And if we're talking media, it shifted a long time ago. So meaning somebody in Accra or South Africa or the States is going to hear your story from Nakuru. From Nakuru, yeah. On a Isn't that insane? We have to go online. So that means, hey, we have to change how we're, how we're moving. Mm. And it's going to require us to take to bet on ourselves, to choose ourselves, to, 
really try and figure out what's the business model around new media how can we live off of it but also how is it like making sure that everybody kind of like grows and you're contributing yeah. to where digital media in Africa is going okay. right that's nice. um, I think I think that's that's the question and you are so blessed in Coleb to be mm. able to have the studio, the studio both games, video and and audio, audio mm. to have the access you already have the internet i'm mm. on the wi-fi so i know there's wi-fi <laughs> here to know okay what, what what's a podcast how, how do i do edit it, it? Mm. what do i cut nobody's gonna do that work for you you know what i mean nobody did it for me either and so once people and young people especially start thinking that way then you'll understand what your role is in like defining what future Kenya and future Africa looks like as much as we like to think it's somebody else's responsibility to build that for us mm. it is not like we all actually have an active role, role to, to play. play and That's if we leave it to somebody else we they might do a shoddy job yeah, <laughs> we have to really do it yeah. on, on our own yeah uh, before I really let you go you've been you've been traveling around Africa trying to get different stories which are some of these stories or some of these creatives you've, you've actually met, especially on, on the uh, platforms where we listen to this podcast? Maybe yeah. you, you, you came across a podcast that's, that really struck you. A podcast a that I like. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so first, I listen. I am those girls who mm -hmm. listen to like crime podcasts. Oh. Like, you know, the ones I, I think that. on TikTok, yeah. they have like, they laugh at girls like us who are like, we're brushing our teeth and we listen to then he cut her and he <laughs> butchered her. I love crime podcasts. I do not know why. I know it's weird. Um, but I was l recently listening to another podcast called um, The Power of the Streets. Okay. And it's by Human Rights Watch. Mm. Power of the Streets is dedicated, this first season is dedicated to um, activists, African activists who are fighting to end sexual um, violence. They're the ones who shared the story about the Nigeria sex for grades. So they recorded, mm. they have an interview with Kiki Mordi Kiki, who, yeah, did who did the story. The story. Mm. I think I talked about it in this episode yeah. of mine. Kiki Mordi and so, and there are many other um, activists they've interviewed this season from Uganda, mm. Burundi, Malawi, uh, Zambi Zimbabwe, I'm sorry, not Zambia, Zimbabwe. So I, I really like it because that's that's kind of like um i can see bits of myself in them and mm -hmm. i can also like learn from their journeys and i can get inspired and it's great to hear africans doing mm -hmm. amazing things like that um but i think there are many podcasts like they are so there's a girl in nairobi called ruby mm -hmm. she was or is a presenter at homeboys i don't know if she's still there she has a hip uh, pod, she has a hip hop show, but she has a podcast as well. Mm. Qu Queenship, Kingship, oh, but with a Q, yes, but with a Q. I like it. She does really beautiful interviews. She interviews people really, really well. Mm. Um, there are so many, and even in Kenya, there's so many like popping up, and, and it's not, great. Right now, you ain't scared of listening to other other podcasts. I was scared before because mm. I don't like my creative um process being influenced okay with that uh by s then you start sounding like other and people then, okay. but now i can relax and listen because i'm like okay i, I kind of know, know where i'm going yeah. i know what the podcast stands for i've done that work we've been around for two and a half years yeah. so i'm 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 good and i'm happy to know that there's a lot more kenyan and african podcasts okay. around yeah around my favorite away from Legally Clueless is Born a Crime by Trevor. Ah, I love the book. You love the book. <laughs> you listen to the I audio. love the book. I love the book. That, that was a nice read. Wha yeah. Where are you guys going uh, after Nakuru? Why are you chasing us? We're in Nakuru for one more day. <laughs> um, so we're in Nakuru for one more day. Okay. And then we will... So we came from Kisumu, Nakuru, and then... The stop of uh, in in Nairobi and then go to Mombasa. Okay. Mombasa is going to be our final mm. destination. Hopefully, um, we'll do another tour and maybe that time we'll be able to spend 
longer stretches mm, longer in, in Nakuru. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. If you have anything to tell the young people from Nakuru looking at this right now, especially yeah. the young people who are interested in business, innovation, and all that kind of you know creative space, yeah. you can speak with them right now. Um, I think I would say just start. Begin. You know what I mean? Just mm. start. I think we kind of like wait and say, when I have 10,000 shillings, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. And then you get the 10,000, you're like, oh, I think I need 30,000 <laughs> to be able to do this. And then you get the 30,000, like, ah, when yeah. I buy this camera, then I'll be able to start. I think you start with what you have. I mean, we'd all love to be able to have stellar work and like okay. professional from the word go, but you kind of have to go through the journey and learn certain things. My stuff is not perfect right now. Um, but it gets better it gets with better. every time I produce mm. it gets better it gets better um, so I think you kind of like need to get out of your own way mm. and just start and and put one foot in front of the other and okay. and see where it goes from there thank you and we hope to see you on radio again even if you say you don't want to come back listen to the podcast and please. <laughs> we hope she comes back on radio but for the moment follow her legally clueless podcast online uh, especially on Google Podcast, of course, the, the videos are also on YouTube. Yes, we have a Legally Clueless yeah. YouTube the first, channel. The first season. The first season is out. There's 13 beautiful episodes yeah. of African stories. Yeah. yeah. So you can check that uh, out as well on, on the, the YouTube channel. Till next time, I'm Caleb Coyle. Stay clueless. <laughs>